Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the sad reality that not every comic book is going to survive. One such comic that bit the dust was Amazing Adult Fantasy, an anthology comic that had multiple stories in one single issue, as opposed to comics of today that can't even have one story in one issue. And it just so happens that I have the very last story to bear the Amazing Adult Fantasy title. There are margins among us. Well, of course there are margins among us. They've been buried under the Earth's surface and won't emerge until 2005 for no reason. The problem was how to find the margins. I would say that the easiest way to find them is to play this song. When I'm calling you So yeah, our story opens up with a splash page of two guys in hats stumbling upon a crashed flying saucer, and a third guy who is either a margin-taking human form, thus setting up the drama of how hard it is to find margins in the first place, or he's a regular human and saying, Dude, you guys should check this place out, it's awesome! The alien spaceship was first sighted by the shocked pilot of a commercial airliner. How he managed to see the spaceship that was clearly behind him was anyone's guess. Seconds after the pilot radioed the news, a search party was headed for the spot where the ship had been seen to land. Admittedly, it was kind of hard to see where the ship had landed, what with it being the dead of night and the spaceship having no lights on it or anything, but still... Wait a minute. This panel is the same scene as in the pseudo-cover. The ship looks the same, the people look the same, save for their different positions, but that's not the same tree that was there before! My god, the aliens are taking the form of trees! BURN THIS WHOLE FOREST TO THE GROUND! The ship is empty. The crew must have fled. It's not like the aliens could send unmanned spacecraft like we've been doing since the 50s. Psh, that'd be stupid. A radio announcer says that the ship is believed to come from the planet Mars, and advises his listeners to not panic until its Martian crew can be found. Ignoring how there's no real revelation as to how they conclude that the ship comes from Mars, do they really expect a radio broadcast about invading Martians to not result in mass panic and hysteria? I'm extremely surprised to learn that a story which has become familiar to children through the medium of comic strips and uh, many succeeding novels and adventure stories should have had such an immediate and profound effect upon radio listeners. And this must be the worst radio station ever. <laughs> Look at this, they can't even afford to fix the broken window in the sound booth. The search for the margins continues. How can we find them when we don't even know what we're looking for? You know your comic's in trouble when you have to rely on Plan 9 from Outer Space for dialogue. It's tough to find something when you don't know what you're looking for. But we must keep searching. Sooner or later, we're bound to find someone... unearthly. Oh my god, I found someone! <laughs> oh, oh, no, wait. It's just Snooky. Weeks pass, and the search for the Martians is still fruitless. Citizens are still urged to stay indoors. The danger from the Martians is believed to be just as great as ever. In other news, America's post-war economy has since gone straight into the toilet, because no one has gone into work for the past month. But you should still stay indoors! An unnamed couple are watching the news, and the husband starts to leave. It's you I worry about. Oh, you're the only thing I do worry about. At that very moment, the search in an ever-widening arc gets closer and closer to the city itself. If it was at that very moment, then why is it suddenly nighttime when the last scene was happening in daylight? What do you know? Haven't you heard of suspension of disbelief? Meanwhile, back at the home of our unnamed heroine... Oh dear, I'm all out of coffee. Oh, I get it. It's Liz Boris, creator of Broken Plot Device. I'm sure it'll be safe enough just to dash to the store for a moment. My husband will be in such a bad mood if there's no coffee for his dinner when he returns. There. That didn't take long. I'll be safely home in a moment, and he won't even know I'd gone out. What? Those footsteps! Behind me! Oh no! No! Let me go! Please! Wow, it's almost like talking loudly while alien invaders are roaming the streets was a bad idea or something. The husband returns a short time later, and naturally panics when he finds that his wife isn't home. He calls someone on the phone, where we have this interesting piece of dialogue. She's ruined everything! The bloodhounds must have got her scent. Now the Earthlings will know she's a Martian, and that means <gasps> they'll be coming after me next! Oh, 
twist! Yeah, what a twist. So yes, it seems that these people were actually the Martians all along. Ignoring the question of how these people were able to integrate so flawlessly into human society, i.e. buying a house or finding a tailor who isn't freaked out by their having four arms, apparently our hero is more concerned with his own safety than that of his beloved wife's. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. And that's it. That's the end of the comic book series. Not even a to-be-continued-in-some-other-monthly title or something. And it's really a shame, too, because I really am pretty interested in where this story could have gone. But sadly, there was no such spin-off from this comic, and the characters within never amounted to anything more.